Welcome to this week's episode here on Overworked Admin. Um, this is our eighth uh, week of PowerShell. Uh, what we're going to be talking about this week is we're going to be talking about loops. And this is kind of going to be a, a jam-packed uh, week because we're going to go through multiple different looping types. And essentially what you'll want to do a lot of times in your scripts is you'll want to have something repeat over and over and over until it meets some sort of condition. And that's what loops are for. Um, loops will loop through a set of code until you tell them uh, to stop. And so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to cover uh, the while loop, but you'll see this trend um, in all of our other loops. You need a way to tell the loop to stop when it's done. And generally the easiest way to do that is set a variable, in this case i, which typically stands for iterator, to some number. So in this case, we're gonna do i equals one. And in our while loop, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say while some condition, perf just do this piece of code over and over. So we'll do while i, our variable, uh, I'm sorry, i, not one, uh, is less than 10. And then we're gonna do, we're gonna go into this code block and we're gonna do right host um, i. And so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna print this variable as long as this goes into a loop. Now watch what happens. So it keeps going through and it keeps printing out this number one all over the screen, right? Well, that's you know not very useful. So what we need to do is while we're going through this loop, we need to increment our iterator variable somehow. So essentially what we can do is we can just do i equals i plus one. So what this is gonna do for us every single time we go through this looping code here, we're going to add one to our iterator value. So let's see what happens there. And as you can see, we go from one to nine. Now, the reason why we go from one to nine is because the while condition says, well, our iterator, which is set to one, is less than 10. Write this out. So when we come back and we've set the i variable to 10, that condition is no longer valid because i, when it's 10, is no longer less than 10. That's why we're not seeing the 10 be printed. So that's a while loop. The while loop has the possibility of either executing or not executing. Um, now, there's something to note here. The condition is evaluated in this while loop before the code is executed. Now, that's gonna be a little bit different in what our next loop is, and our next loop is gonna be called a do loop. And there's, there's a big difference here in the do loop, and the do loop is gonna look something like this. We're gonna say do this thing while, and then we're gonna have a condition, right? So what do you think is gonna happen now that we've put the testing condition after the, the body. Well, if you answer the do loop is always going to execute at least one time, you are exactly correct. So let's say i is now equal to 10. What do we think we're gonna happen? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna print out 10. So even though, um, it doesn't make any sense of pointing at the screen, you can't see what I'm pointing at. Um, <laughs> even though the statement the i less than 10 here evaluates to false the very first time because the evaluating criteria comes after the code executes it's always going to be executed once so let's say uh, you have a menu in a program you know that when the user first launches the program you're always going to want to display that menu at least once maybe you would use some sort of do loop in not a while loop and actually this would be kind of a do while loop. As you see, you have the do first and then you have the while down here. So while the condition will be evaluated before the code executes and the do while the condition of the code will be evaluated after the code executes the first time. So those are important concepts. Um, so we have something fairly similar to a do while uh, and it's a do until loop. So you could do this, do until, um, and, and where this is saying, 
do um, do this until some sort of negative condition. So, um, or do this while a positive condition exists. Do this until you know i is less than ten. The do until loop. You could say uh, do this until i is greater than ten. So let's go back and let's see how this executes. So see how the difference here? So we get one through 10. Whereas in the original while loop, we had one printed out through nine in the while loop, but we actually get the full 10 with the do until loop. So um, slightly different. And, and you may run into kind of logic problems in your code where you're not sure why certain things are, are not being printed or not being iterated through as many times as you would think. A lot of times you can tweak that depending on what type of loop that you use. Now, it is very true. In this case, if we wanted to get the 10 to print out, we could have said um, while, you know, while 10, or I'm sorry, well, I is less than 11 print. That's true, but it's not really the best logic. Um, uh, people might say that this is a cleaner type of loop for that logic statement. So up until this point, we've seen that all of our loops um, have the, the iterator variable kind of um, what's called instantiated or initialized outside of the loop itself. Well, if you want to you know, have this initiator variable, this i variable initiated within the loop, you can use something that's called a for loop. So you can do for, and the for loop kind of has um, three different conditions to it. So in the first part of the for loop, we're gonna set our i equal to one. And then in the second part, we're gonna set the condition that this for loop is gonna run um, until this condition is met. So in this condition is going to be, you're gonna keep executing until I is, uh, or while I is less than 10. And then the third condition is the iteration of the I variable. So what we can do is we can do I plus plus. And what this is essentially doing for us is it's taking the, initialization, the initialization of the i variable, it's iterating the i variable and setting the condition all in that one clean line there. So now, if we were to execute this and say write post i not one, we should get one to nine. And that is exactly what we get. And again, we're iterating this because until i is less than 10. And because this condition is checked at the beginning of the loop, as soon as i hits 10, then this statement is no longer true. So the 10th, you know, when i hits 10, it's no longer gonna print. Now, the one loop that I really love is called the for each loop. And it's a little bit more of an advanced loop. It's generally used if you have to do an array of some sort, and we'll get into arrays. But remember, we use the get services and get processes command. Well, what if we wanted to um, iterate through and spit out you know, a certain piece of the name for each one of those processes? So um, we could use that where option with the dollar sign underscore period and iterate through that way. But um, if another option we have is a uh, for each. And so what we would do is we say services, and then we're gonna set our services, and this little ampersand here is how you specify an array. And we're gonna do the get services command, or get service, I'm sorry. And so now what this is gonna do, it's gonna execute that get service command and put it into the services array. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna say for each, right, and this is really important, for each service in services, I'm sorry, this is my, uh, I needed to make this service here plural because as this is the collection of all of our services. What we're going to do is we're going to write post service dot name. 
So now let's just take a minute in in before we execute this, um, step by step, see exactly what's going on. So we're executing the git service command, which will give us back all of the services that are running on the system. This little ampersign is going to tell our variable that it's going to be receiving an array of data, right? And this is plural. Notice the S here. This is a, a very fine note, but an important point that you need to see. Then so you're gonna take this list of services, like an array, then we're gonna use this for each loop and it's saying for every service, singular service, in the services, plural, array, I'm going to write out to the screen that particular service that we're looking at, that name. So let's see how this executes. And so what you see here is we get all of the names of our services. And I can show you a big jumble of mess. Um, I'll just show you this if you don't specify name. It, it, it just gives you um, the service controller. It just gives you an object type. That's why we do name. So it, what it's doing now is iterating through every single um, service that we have running and just printing out the name. And what we could do to verify that, we could, um, let's just comment this out. I can remember my comment here, whatever. Um, just do get service. And so we're seeing all these particular names here, AD, AM, VMware, blah, blah, blah. And let's do, go back again. So we see this ADWS, let's see if we see these same names. And we sure do. So this is just giving us the service name and we're iterating through every single service that we have on the system. So this is a pretty pretty important um, lesson here. Uh, lesson eight, there's a lot of, of information here. So what I would do is I'd recommend going through and playing with each one of these types of loops and counting and iterating through services and processes till you really understand what's going on. Thanks again for watching. If you like the content, please do subscribe. Please tell your friends and please check out the ads that the sponsors put in the videos. Give them a little click if it's something of interest. It's how I keep the show running. Um, I'm also kind of looking for ideas uh, for our next 14 part series. My current idea and I started developing the track for is if you're into Linux, I'm gonna do 14 weeks of Linux. Take you from the ground up, not knowing anything about Linux, and how to start managing a um, CentOS 6.3 version of Linux completely from the command line. If you think it's a good idea, let me know, drop me a line, post some comments, and thanks again for watching here on overworkedadmin.com.